Welcome to NCIX Tech Tips. Today's episode is going to be the how to buy a surround monitor guide. Lots of people ask me, what monitor should I get for surround gaming? Today, I'm gonna give you guys the answer and it might have something to do with the product we're checking out, which is the H236HL BID from Acer. So step number one when you're doing any kind of monitor shopping is you usually shop for size. Now for me personally, I prefer a high resolution 27 or 30 inch monitor. I like to have a nice big display. But if I was shopping for a surround setup, I wouldn't buy three of them. And the reason for that is because it starts to get so wide that you can't even see all the way to the edge of your screen, which might be okay for a cinematic gaming experience, but might not be optimal for desktop use when your taskbar is gonna go all the way down to your system trays, like way over to the right, you can barely see it. You actually have to turn your head in order to use it. So I find 23 to 24 inches is a pretty good sweet spot in terms of size because you can get 1080p monitors, which will have good pixel density density at that size and you don't have to look like this just to see all the stuff that's on your display. So this one's available in 1080p in both a 21.5 and a 23 inch config and I'd probably recommend going with the 23. Now we've got a pretty sweet gaming machine here. This is the NCIX PC LP1. It's a LAN party optimized machine. It's got like cool uh, lighting effects inside. It's powered by a GTX 660 Ti. So great little gra gaming graphics card. And so we're looking for monitors that are optimized for gaming. For productivity, you might be looking at something slightly different, but the reason that we like these ones are a couple things. Number one is the viewing angles. Why did we go with IPS monitors for gaming? Because the wisdom out there is largely that TN is optimized for gaming because the panels are faster, and this is true. But if you can get nice, fast IPS panels, in this case, these ones are five milliseconds, for surround gaming, IPS becomes a much more important option. Because think about this, guys. I'm gonna go ahead, I'm just gonna like move, and I'm gonna surprise my camera people, but check this out. So the thing with TN is you gotta look straight at it in order to get the optimal colors and the optimal image quality. With IPS, you can look at it peripherally and you don't have to quite go straight on in order to see the best colors and the best image quality. So when I have monitors positioned like this, it's pretty much impossible. If I position them so I was looking straight at them, they would be at such a weird angle and such a, such a closed, confined space that now they'd start to stretch out past my peripheral vision and I wouldn't be able to see them anyway. So that's why I find it's better to have more like a curved screen in front of you than being looking directly at the monitors. So IPS makes for a very good option and these look fantastic from any angle, which you guys can clearly see if you check out what it looks like in our close up here. The next thing to look for is something that's not going to have a very wide intrusive bezel. So the bezel on this particular monitor is pretty unique. So number one is it's a glass fronted monitor which looks better than glossy plastic because it's possible to get the gap between the glass surface and the LCD panel very narrow which reduces glare. It also looks extremely vibrant because of that glossy finish and the glass actually goes almost completely to the edge of the monitor making it look much more seamless than having a bulky plastic bezel. Now, something I didn't expect because I noticed that the image doesn't quite go to the edge of the screen and I was a little bit disappointed when I first saw the monitor in person. But once I put the monitors with each other, what I didn't expect to happen was that I'd have a much better experience doing a couple of things. Number one is I don't have to ever look past the bezel. They're extremely easy to align because you don't have to worry about, okay, the, the bezel collides with the next monitor over when I'm trying to put them next to each other, so it actually separates them out even further. The other is that they are slimmer, and the fact that you don't have that, uh, that, that piece in between, so there's a gap in the image, but there isn't a piece, makes it much less distracting. Now this might seem like a bit of an odd thing, but I'm gonna close out this video with a bit of uh, criticism for the H236HL. So I'm gonna start with some of the good things. It's got an IPS panel, it's got HDMI, DVI, and VGA in. It is extremely slim. So I'm gonna go ahead and do my trademark iPhone comparison here for you guys. Looks really good, especially given the price point of under $200 for an IPS 1080p monitor. But 
it is still not the perfect surround setup. So a couple of reasons. Number one is I would have liked to see the image go closer to the edges for a more seamless surround span in front of the user. Number two is I would have liked to see a more robust stand with things like height adjust just to make it more comfortable to use. Last thing you want is a really cool surround setup with like phone books under each one because it looks kind of goofy. And Failing that, I would have liked to see a vase mount on the back of the monitor, which unfortunately Acer didn't include on this model, but I do understand why, because it is a more entry-level position monitor in terms of price. So a while, with all of those criticisms aside, while it may not be the perfect monitor, it's the best one I've encountered yet for a surround gaming experience, and even, I mean, any surround use experience, because it looks much sleeker, and it is a less distracting bezel, even though there is still a gap there. Thank you for checking out this episode of NCIX Tech Tips. As always, don't forget to subscribe for more videos like this from your favorite e-tailer, NCIX.com.